it's Super Ruth and it's Thanksgiving Super Kids. Today and for the rest of the year, we are going to be thankful, intentionally thankful. I'm so grateful I get to share this season with you all. Thanksgiving today is a special one. Do you ever feel like you've asked for a lot and it seems like God is not answering your prayers? Well, today, Chris, Joy, and Gizmo are taken back in time on an adventure. It was a time in the history of the Bible when the Israelites felt like God had abandoned them. Let's watch and I will tell you what stood out to me. Okay, best pizza ever. Oh, easy. Last summer, snack stand at the skateboard park. The pepperoni pineapple palooza. I ate the whole thing myself. Best soccer play. Second game this season, four seconds to go. My incredible header. Goal! <laughs> Best card trick ever. Ready? All I need is 14 more decks of cards, 30 pounds of feathers, and an ostrich egg. Um, Gizmo, we don't have any of those things. Okay then, second best card trick ever. Oh! We're all out of oversized bananas and moon rocks. Forget it. Oh! Best Superbook trip ever that had a real giant. David and Goliath. Best Superbook trip ever that had flaming swords. Whoa, if I just had that ostrich egg. I got it, the battle in heaven with Michael and Lucifer. I know, the best Superbook trip ever. That had what? Nothing, just the best, most important Superbook adventure ever. What do you think it was? Wow! Just think, Joy, of all the times we've traveled with Superbook, do you think we've even been on the best, most important adventure there is? Superbook's greatest adventure of all time? Hmm, maybe we haven't. Superbook! Taking you to see such things that if you searched all of history, from the time God created people on the earth until now, and searched from one end of the heavens to the other, you would know nothing as great as this has ever been seen or heard before. My geosensors indicate we are in the land of Midian, in the year... Well, well, what have we here? Are you travelers who have lost your way? Uh, we have not lost our way. I am programmed to, uh, I mean, uh, well, that is to say that, uh, oh, do you know that you have some fine hay here? <laughs> and here? And here, and... <laughs> you know what? We're not from around here. My name is Chris. This is Joy and Gizmo. I am Moses. Uh... And forgive me, but it appears I had better herd those runaways back to my flock. We will help you. Thank you for your help, children. This is really amazing country. Have you lived here long, Moses? For a good number of years I have lived in Midian. Well, where did you live before this? I lived in Egypt, where I was raised as the son of the pharaoh. Wait, the pharaoh? As in the king of Egypt kind of pharaoh? Yes. But it was in the time of the old pharaoh. Though I was raised an Egyptian, I am Hebrew by birth. <sighs> Once I came across an Egyptian taskmaster beating a slave. I tried to stop his hand, but he struggled, and I struck him down. Keep it moving. 
That was another lifetime. Here in Midian, I found refuge, and for many years I have lived happily, raising my family and tending my herds. And all the slaves were freed, right? Sadly, no. My people still toil in bondage, but now they bow to a new pharaoh who is even more cruel. Moses? Huh? Look! Moses? Moses? Here I am. Do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place you stand is holy ground. I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. I am who I am. Is Moses talking to a plant? Shh! Look, the bush is on fire, but it's not burning up. I have seen how my people are suffering as slaves in Egypt, and I have heard them beg for my help because of the way they are being mistreated. I feel sorry for them. Now go, for I am sending you to the Pharaoh. You must lead my people, Israel, out of Egypt. But who am I to go to the king and lead your people out of Egypt? The Pharaoh is a harsh and godless man. Why would he listen to me? I will be with you. And you will know that I am the one who sent you when you worship me on this mountain after you have led my people out of Egypt. But, but suppose they will not believe me or, or listen to my voice. Suppose they say, the Lord has not appeared to you. What is in your hand? A shepherd's staff? Cast it on the ground. <gasps> Did you see that? I must ask Moses to teach me that one. Reach out your hand and take it by the tail. I am not very good with words. I, I never have been, and I'm not now. Even though you have spoken to me, I get tongue-tied, and, and my words get tangled. Who makes a person's mouth? Who decides whether people speak or do not speak, hear or do not hear, see or do not see? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go. When you speak, I will be with you and give you the words to say. Moses! Moses! Aaron, my brother! Oh, it's good to see you again. The most amazing thing has occurred. The Lord spoke to me. He asked me to come meet you. God has told me to go to Egypt and free our people. I fear I will not be able to do what the Lord is requesting of me. and most revered Pharaoh. Two shepherds request an audience. They claim to represent the Hebrew slaves. Shall I send them away? <laughs> no, this amuses me. Show them me. <laughs> Pharaoh will see you. Please try not to track mud in the throne room. Mighty, uh, um, great, Pharaoh. Speak up, insect. <laughs> oh, mighty Pharaoh, thus says the Lord God of Israel, 
Let my people go, that they may hold a feast to me in the wilderness. Who is this lord, and why should I obey him? I do not know the lord, nor will I let Israel go. <laughs> I'm guessing that's a no. Get them out of my sight! So they can hold a feast. <laughs> oh, shepherds. Pharaoh wishes you to deliver a message to your Hebrew friends. Because of your insolence, he is now increasing the slaves' workload. Hmm. Have a nice day. Why have you brought all this trouble on your own people, Lord? Why did you send me? Now you shall see what I will do to Pharaoh. Because of my mighty power, he will let my people go, and he will even chase them out of his country. Again? <clears throat> Again, we beseech you, O mighty Pharaoh, in the name of the Lord, re release the children of Israel from their bondage. And again, I say no. And you may tell this so-called God, who makes such bold demands, that he has no power in my kingdom. Then, behold! Uh, maybe I should try my magic card shuffle. Magicians. Whoa! <laughs> My court magicians do what your god can do. Whoa, I've never seen a snake swallow another snake before. Out! And tell your people I will never let them go! Pharaoh! The Lord, the God of the Hebrews, has sent me to tell you, let my people go so they can worship me in the wilderness. I warn you, Moses, do not strain my patience or you and your Hebrew vermin will pay the price! Then, let the waters turn to blood! I will bathe in the palace this evening. What will it take? Thus says the Lord, let my people go that they may serve me. Never! Then shall Egypt suffer yet more plagues. Frogs. Lice. Flies. Disease. Boils. Hail. Locusts. No, no, no. 
powerful Ra, God of the Eternal Sun. Protect us against the torments of this shepherd's god. through Egypt, and all the firstborn in the land will die. But each house of Israel shall smear lamb's blood on the doorposts as a sign. And the Lord will see the blood of the lamb and will pass over those houses. Even the firstborn of Pharaoh shall perish. Get out! Leave my people and take the rest of the Israelites with you! I've never seen so many people. There must have been a million Israelite slaves. Slaves no more, thanks to God. And to Moses, he will take us to a new life. Mighty one, why have we let Israel go? Slaves must not give orders to Pharaoh. They must pay for what they have done. Captain, assemble the army. Make ready all the chariots in Egypt. We shall crush these filthy Israelites. And this time, none shall escape. How are we supposed to get to the mountain of God with the Red Sea in our way? Moses knows where he's taking us to, so he must know how we're gonna get there. Moses! Perry was on his way with his army! Have faith! The Lord has a plan! You, uh, wouldn't happen to know what that plan is, would you, Moses? No, not yet. But I do know that God is always with us, and he will show us the way. Look! children of Israel to go forward, but lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it.
waiting for! After them! I thought a simple shepherd would be chosen by God to save the Israelites. Chris! It's happening! We're going back! That was... Amazing! The most awesome Superbook adventure ever! Agreed? Agreed! Agreed. <sighs> but you know what? There was still the best adventure with a giant! And another with flaming swords! Yes! So that means there will still be lots more adventures! I cannot wait! Ooh! Did I say that? We gotta find Superbook and get him to take us on a new adventure! Superbook! Where are you? Where is Superbook? You can never find him! He just comes when he wants! Hey, Superbook! So let's get down. Remember when I asked in the beginning if you had things you had asked God for and it felt like God was not listening. Now that's how it felt for the Israelites. They had become slaves in Egypt and for many years had prayed that God would send a deliverer. And God did, but at first it seemed like it was not really from God because instead of Pharaoh to let them go, oh no, he increased their workload and made life a lot harder for them. If you ask me, the Israelites had nothing to be thankful for. Before Moses came to deliver them, like God said, they were slaves and even when Moses came, the Egyptians would not let them go. And when Pharaoh eventually decided to let them go, you guys can go, just go. They were faced with crossing the Red Sea, which seemed like an impossible task. And behind them, hmm, were Pharaoh soldiers. Lots of negative things happening one after the other. But in that situation, this is what Moses said. But Moses answered, don't be afraid. Stand still and see the Lord save you today. You will never see these Egyptians again after today. You will only need to remain calm. The Lord will fight for you. That's taken from Exodus chapter 14, verse 13 to 14. There's also a Bible verse in 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, and it says, Give thanks whatever happens. That is what God wants for you in Christ Jesus. Giving thanks during hard times can be very difficult, I must admit. One thing I know that makes it a little easier is remembering the good things God has done for you in the past. Thanksgiving gives us hope and builds our confidence in God. Now let's try and look at the good things that the Israelites could focus on when they were going through hard times. God heard their prayers and sent Moses to lead them out of Egypt. That's number one. Even when they were still slaves in Egypt, God was looking out for them and blessed them with good health, number two, strength, number three, and fruitfulness, number four. It's endless. Without the Israelites, Egypt could not be built. That's like major. Do you see what I did now? I began to focus on all the good things. 
That's what God wants us to do whenever we are faced with any challenge. Are you feeling sick and want God to heal you? Or is it a close family relative or friend that is sick? Are you having difficulty at school, with schoolwork, or even making friends? Whatever seems like the negative thing in your life, God says you should give him thanks. Thanksgiving helps to calm our nerves. And when we look at that situation, it doesn't come off as very bad or difficult. So today and for the rest of the year, in addition to thanking God for the things that have gone well, we are going to specially be thanking God for the things that do not seem to be going well too. You may ask, how or why? Because the Bible says so. Ephesians 5 verse 20, Always give thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, we should thank Him in the good and bad. Let's start practicing right now by saying a prayer together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for our lives. We give you all the glory. You have done us well, and we admit it so. So we thank you because your word says we should, and your word is true and faithful. Your word says you would heal us. Your word says you would provide for us. Your word says you would grant us excellence. So we are praying that in any way any one of us is feeling sick, doesn't have money to do some things, is not doing well in school, we thank you because your word says you will do all this. You will turn it around. So we are thanking you in advance for what you are set to do in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Dear Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for taking my sins away. And thank you for giving me my identity. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and make it your home. Help me to be just like you. Lord Jesus, please send your Holy Spirit to guide me every day. Thank you, God, for making me your child. Amen. The free Superbook Bible app has fun stuff everyone will love. It's jam-packed with games and activities, plus lots of exciting Superbook episodes that you can watch for free. Find answers to your questions, watch videos, discover biblical heroes, and of course, read the Bible. It's even great for practicing your English. The new Superbook Bible app, all the fun of Superbook in an app. Free downloads on iTunes, Google Play, and Amazon. Yeah, I know it's craft time and it's not super booky. There's a twist in today's craft segment and today we are making a meal. Well, more like fruit sticks. Now the whole idea is to make something for your family this Thanksgiving. You may need some adult supervision, especially for the cotton, so please ask an adult to assist you. Make sure you share this with your family and even your friends. And while you share, remind them to always have a thankful spirit. So let's get into the fruit sticks. So we have our fruits here. We have, um, like you can see, we have watermelon, we have apples, we have the English pear, we have tangerine, but you can choose other types of fruits, banana, watermelon, grapes, whatever, strawberries. You can use the berry family. If you just want a whole berry family sticks, you can do that. So to start, um, because it's healthy living, we'll be using our hand gloves. And we have our knives. Remember I said we need supervision because um, we're going to be using knife. So this is my knife. And when I said fruit sticks, we're going to be taking each fruit and stick on our sticks. Okay, so I've already cut my fruit, not just to save time. So I will be cutting this into box forms. You could also get maybe a cookie cutter so you could have different shapes like star, hexagon, different shapes, you understand? So but I'm going to be using square shapes for my own. So I'm cutting the watermelon. So 
So I'm done with watermelon. Then these are my apples. I'm done with the apples and I have my pear. I have tangerines, I won't cut them, I'll just put them into the stick and then I have grapes as well. So let's do this. So I have my stick, I'll just mix everything. Take it down. And let's take our tangerine, our grape. This is so beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, it's Thanksgiving, it has to be beautiful. And watermelon. So we put that down. Take another stick. It's simple. It's fun to make. And then you can share. So it doesn't really have to take the same order. Just mix and match. Then you can see very easy and quick. You can imagine if you use the berry family to be so colorful. So, okay, we'll do another stick. I'm really enjoying this. I love making fruit, so. I'm sure you're celebrating. Yeah, it's okay to celebrate. Just go and do yours and you will enjoy every bit of it. So I'm going to share all this with my family and friends because it's Thanksgiving. Like I said, please share with your family and friends. And remember, God wants us to be thankful even when things do not go well. If you'd like to send us a message or even call to speak with someone, so we can either pray with you or just hear your different suggestions, then send us a message with the email and number showing on your screen. Our next segment is coming up, but let me ask you a question. Do you want to save money for the Christmas holiday? Do you want some money to be able to buy some gift for people you love? Is that a yes I hear? Then you must listen to the next segment. 
until next time we come your way i love you and god loves you most bye hello super kids it's super uji here to bring you exciting news quick question what do you do with the money aunties and uncles or mommies and daddies give you when you visit i have two quick guesses one you put it in your piggy bank or two you give mommy and daddy to keep it for you right or do you just spend it on ice cream and the latest toys i work with a finance company and one thing we do is help people including children make the best choices financially the name of the company is future finance i'm going to help you spell it now it's f e w c h o r e future finance will be partnering with superbook to teach you amazing kids about finances so we have some episodes where we teach you in the simplest way things like investment savings assets equity and so much more are you ready i'm going to be calling all of you super savers and do you know why well it's because i believe that you're all going to join me become extraordinary savers being a super saver can get you rewards there are lots of things to save for the bike you have been wanting mommy and daddy to buy for you shopping money for the next travel with the family and even your education as a super saver you also train yourself to save for the future did you see what i did there you save for your future with future look at mommy and daddy and say i am ready to be a super saver Give us a call so we can walk you through getting our super savers started. You can call the number scrolling on your screen, which is 070-33924673 or 081-1887-8084. You can also send an email to info at futurefinance.com or customer care at futurefinance.com. We're always willing to answer your questions and put you through it all. Watch out for more segments sponsored by Future Finance. Have a super holiday. Travel